So here we are, ready to do Helvellyn, the outdoor Geordie and sidekick Spinks. We're at Glen Ridden Car Park, seven pound all day parking. That's at least 400 cups of coffee and half a <laughs> week's wages. <laughs> So here we are on the Outdoor Geordie channel, I made, there's Paul, my sidekick for today, the same one from Skidor. Um, and we're just coming into the Glen Ridden village, the village is so gorgeous and quiet. Years ago this is where I bought my very first uh, uh, low alpine rucksack from, still in the loft, falling a bit apart now, look at this lovely back. We're going to be coming back down via this back a bit later on. Well, that's where we're heading in the short term. There we go, me and the Spinksy. Let's do this. to Landy's Town, path to Landy's Town rather, as you see, a couple of chaps behind us, and uh, already the path disappeared. <laughs> So where we're going up there, that's absolutely beautiful. Helvalen, and then I'm assuming some rocks we're going to have to climb to even get that point. But I think we're going to go through this valley, which is a long trek through the valley, and that's where we're going now. Let's come down from there, and then you can see Trusty Sidekick scooting off in the distance. There he is, there, and there's me. Down after being at Lanty's Tarn, beautiful place. Went there my wife about 25 years ago. I'm sure we're smoking about the ducks. Well, I didn't see any ducks today. I'm sure the same ducks aren't still alive. Probably in a spring roll or something. Oh wow. What I can see now, I'll just flip the camera back round again. Flip it round and I'll just zoom in. Look at that, absolutely incredible. Absolutely amazing sight, I don't think I've ever seen a Valen look this good. 
good before it's always been cloudy or pissing down as does it in the lakes quite a lot but, um, wow I'm just, I'm just absolutely blown away by this Still coming, heading up there, somewhere, hole in the wall. So we're gonna hit hole in the wall and uh, we're doing okay. It's, it's, uh, it was lovely and sunny before, probably a good, I wanna say 10, 12, maybe 13 degrees. Uh, and as I've come up probably a few hundred meters now, it's started to get windy. We're gonna see that weather inversion, which I've been learning about. Where basically this is a north northeast wind about 10 miles an hour up on the top there and we're going to start seeing that westerly wind hit us and that will create like a bit of a storm zone on the top of Helvalin and we're going to see some uh, more brutal weather I think I could be pleasantly surprised and then uh, it's going to drop down to seemingly according to Cumbria weather minus 5 and around about 1 p.m. supposedly going to get snow yay ski time Well, it's getting a bit colder now. We're just headed up towards Hole in the Wall, which is behind us. And I've just got this montane base layer on, which has been enough so far, because I was very warm. And uh, my uh, rucksack bit there is a bit damp. So not a great review for Osprey there, but never mind. Um, I'm also drinking a lot more water than I expected to, but I think as it gets colder, I should be fine. Some food to have at the top and see how Valin hole in the wall it's time to put on a down jacket now because it's getting a bit cold i've got another waterproof layer to put on later on if it does get snowy and i've got my fleece my burkhouse fleece to put on if i need that extra layer it's better to start cold as they say oh there we are back in true outdoor geordie style the woolly hat on my reno montane woolly hat and my rab 750 full power down. I mean, the massive difference. Lovely, lovely warm jacket. Should be good now, all the way at the top. I'd say a good lesson. Start off in just the basic layer and then build up after that. Got gloves ready in my backpack. First time I would say that I really got my backpack organized properly with emergency stuff at the bottom food in the middle and then my layer system at the top you probably hear the wind picking up now but I'm just hoping this new camera my DJI pocket 2 is gonna have the wind a little less like I'm in the tailwind of a Boeing 757 this is what the other videos sound like so I do apologize Heading up now to Hole in the Wall. It's about another 20 minutes ahead. I'll come back to you then.
that's Katy Cam over there. And there is the mighty Hell Valley, there's Swirl Edge, and there's Striding Edge. Just gonna have a little look at it from over here. Go over this turnstile thing. So how how do you are you we're going? How the lads? Where, where are you from? From Blackpool. Boys. From where? Blackpool. From Blackpool. Yeah. Party town. Blackpool. Hey, it's got one of them strange kind of like locks on, so it doesn't pick up everything. So yeah, do you just do mountains much or? It, it is. I wait. You get the hardest bit that's to come. Actually, I find the hardest bit is actually coming down Swirl Edge. Uh, straight in there just is only scary if you look down this one bit and what happens is it's like a big stack about halfway along and then if you go up there and you think oh shit and then you realize there's like a little path there's all these old women like with their sticks going past it oh sh i should have took that path but, but anyway nice to meet you guys and uh catch you later cheers We started our ascent of Helvellyn by a striding edge. I've got to say at this point, I was anxious. I'm not good with heights and it's been a long time since I've done it. I'd also promised myself that in a couple of weeks I'd do Blen Cathra by Sharp Edge, which was promising to be much worse. Well, it's very busy here in Helvellyn. People sort of shouting and screaming as well, which is a little bit boring, but the yob culture there. <sighs> wow. Start to scramble up straddling edge. The temperature drop was very noticeable and the wind started to pick up. I was wondering what I was about to expect. I'd had some really bad times of ladders at work on scaffolding and I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do this or not. Suddenly I felt quite calm and found the top route. I knew everything was going to be okay.
was quite calm, but I soon noticed the rocks became very icy, and with the wind, it had a real arctic feel. My new boots had lots of grip, but I soon realised that one slip could send me flying five, six hundred feet down to the bottom. So on striding edge here, seem to be find ourselves on some like a lower path. Beautiful weather. I'm very very lucky considering it's uh, April and it's quite cold on the ground. The best way to do striding edge is just definitely to get on the top and balance. If you start going at these silly nana paths, first of all, you look like a nana. Secondly, they're slippy, you're closer to the edge. So grow a pair and go over the top is the best advice. And for God's sake, Take your shit home. You're given this beautiful gift and you throw rubbish everywhere.
here we are. I just come to the end of Stride and Edge, and I don't know if you can see or not. If I keep still, it's actually snowing, which is quite beautiful. It's like a winter's eve. I've got to say, Stride and Edge. Either I've grown up or whatever, but certainly not as scary as what it felt like. But then again, last time I did take a ten-year-old over, Connor, and then Jack. A few years after that, you're always worried about your own, but hmm. Well, here comes my trusty sidekick in the background. Suffice to say, there's a couple of young ladies back there, and I think that that's what's waylaid him. Um, he does claim there was some kind of roadblock. I don't believe this is true. I have seen no French bulldogs, but it's snowing, and that means ski time. I found Striding Edge so much fun. It was icy and quite challenging, but I wasn't scared. I seem to have gotten rid of my demons involving heights and, and falling and stuff like that. And I'm ready for the next adventure, which will be Blencathra Sharp Edge and then Cribgoch. When you get to the end of Striding Edge, you're faced with the final push to the top of Helvellyn. It's quite steep and it takes quite a while. So best on take some fluids, maybe a bit of food, and on you go. So this me, the backdrop of Striding Edge. It's known. Before, just a bit of Patterdale Common up to Hole in the Wall, what do you think of that? It was good going, good on the lungs, um, a little bit strenuous, quite a steep incline, but I thought it was okay, yeah, yeah, got, got through it okay. So part two was then Stride and Edge? Yeah, I felt um, challenging was probably the word, yeah. But the heights are something you shouldn't be scared of? No, no. no. And stay on the top, not the nana path. Yeah, yeah, def okay. definitely. I mean, um, there's a snow on the left hand side, isn't there, where the sun doesn't shine? Yeah, I think so. uh, the, the, the the conditions made it that little bit more difficult, but I would definitely advise to stay on the, on the uh, top, on the top, on yeah. the edge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You've got a good sort of what five mil, eight or eight, and then you've got about a thousand foot drop. Yeah, uh, there's your friends down there. Look. Hello, so I'm on here. This is the outdoor Geordie with three young ladies. Daisy, Amy, Vic. And what are you doing the army? HR. HR. Yeah. Oh well, here are all department or you've got it. what 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 call are you in? I teach us Superb. Awesome. RMP? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
Ooh. And we found the red cup. No, blue cup. Huh? Red. red cup. If I go through all the colours, I would have got the red <laughs> And uh, we didn't find the red cherry at all. And the last one, you, you literally ma mountain goats. Bear. <laughs> So this is just what's so disappointing about people. There is no hope for the human race. And you look down there and you see two lovely people just sitting on the edge of Stride and Edge having their bait. And you get shitheads leaving rubbish. Crazy man. Right. <sighs> Because that's what trick points are for. Might change my name to the outdoor grumbler. <laughs> well, leave it as you found it, eh? I can't believe that people had to come up here, volunteer, had to come up here and clear eight rubbish sacks away. bottom of Swirl and I'm going to go on to a ledge and then back up Catsty Cam and then back down and back to the car with the heated seats and some freshly brewed coffee. People always say that uh, Striding Edge is the hard one, and I think Striding Edge actually is straightforward. Swirl Edge, on the hand, coming down Swirl Edge is, well, the thing about Swirl Edge is no nana path. Look at Striding Edge over there, it's just wonderful. This whole thing, it could even be like a volcano, it's like, wow. Really nice up here, I love it. One of my favourite places on earth. I don't want to be anywhere else right now. Beautiful. Just coming down to a ledge that you see behind. Uh, more annoying than anything else because it's just nothing too challenging to deal with. Whereas Stride and Edge, nice and challenging, sort of proper technical, sort of rambling over the top. It looks absolutely amazing if I flip the screen around. There's a lovely hill of Ellen. And there's Stride and Edge over there. And I've just tripped. So we're heading now along the path to uh, Catsty Cam. So when I get the foot of Catsty Cam, I'll come back to you. All right, well, we've come to the bottom of Swirl Edge, come along this wily coyote path, and now I spin around, you can see the roadrunner himself, meep meep, heading up towards Catsty Cam. 
So off we go. Coming down from Swirl Edge, you've got two choices. There's a fork in the road. One path will take you down to Red Tarn and then back to Glen Ridding. Or you can make a slight left and go up Catty Cam. You've got a chance then to bag another Wainwright, as they say, around about 890 metres. Once you've done Catty Cam to the summit, you can double back on yourself and find that path in the fork in the road and go back down to Red Tarn. Or you can go over the top of Catty Cam and come down the other side into Glen Ridding Beck. And here we are, the summit of Cassidy Cam. See the sea over there. And I think Van Cathra. Over there. And there is the absolute juggernaut. That's where it is of Helvellyn. We're not striding edge there, and then as you can see, some glen ridden valley. All the way down, my head is sort of that way. Okay, so we're leaving Catsy Cam. If I flip round, you will see we're going to go around this route here, along the top, and then down there, down the back of there, and then this path along here, and follow down to Glen Riddenbeck, back to the car park. Coming down from Catsy Cam, um, it's it's okay, but it's just scree all the way down. Rest, come down sideways. I think is the, the honest answer. And just make sure every foot, he says, this is about to go off over tip. It's good to show this because a lot of people on YouTube don't show the videos, I'm certainly not slagging them off, um, but it's good to show the watts and all. Whoa! There he goes. Woo! Be careful, you want to pull it back, twisting it too much. The route down there. There's Paul meandering. It's good. There we go. There's Cathy come up there. We're in the distance. And here is a big hole. That is strange. In there. I don't know what lives in there, but. Probably a troll. So when I buy Page and Drac, a bridge for their new house, this is where I'll get the troll from. <laughs> 